This podcast is part of the Big Heads Media Podcast Network. Go to BigHeadsMedia.com for more great podcasts. Today on Things I Found Online, we tackle transgender issues and the internet. How has technology advanced our understanding and acceptance of transgender individuals? We are about to find out with our guest, Marty Suroy, Nate Halbauer, and our panel, Lori Rogan Kemp, and me, Jamie Elcroft, ever so elegantly tossing to our host, Louise Blanker. Thank wheezy, you, Jamie. Wheezy, wheezy, wheezy. Yes, thank you, Jamie. That was um, some high end announcing. <laughs> Welcome, guests. Here in the studio, we have Nate Hellbauer, and joining us via Zoom video conferencing is our friend, Marty Soroy. Are you there, Marty? Yeah. Yay. I'm here. Hi. Yay. Thank you for joining Hi. us from North Carolina. My pleasure. Yay. So here's what we're going to be talking about. On September 10th, 2016, Marty Soroy posted this entry to Facebook, it, it, and she titled it an open letter to the tween girls clothing store Justice, Raleigh, North Carolina branch at Pointer Place behind Triangle Town Center. Do they have a Starbucks? <laughs> if I'm going to go. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Really. I, I don't mean, remember. All right. No, on every corner. This post corner. has 5.5 thousand comments and 33,000 shares. The post is straightforward, honest, and grateful. You don't always see a lot of that online. For our listeners, we would like to perform a dramatic reading of selected highlights so that you can better understand the content and the tone of Marty's posts. Are my actors ready? Let me, by way of uh, background, Marty is the mother of a transgender child, and she wrote the following. Lori opens the scene. <clears throat> Dear Justice, this weekend you made a little boy's dreams come true. My 10-year-old gender non-conforming son has been wanting to shop at Justice since he was four, when he would tag along with his big sister shopping for clothes. After about age 11, she outgrew Justice, and we hadn't gone in the store for years. He ended up always begrudgingly trying on clothes from the boys' department along with his older brother, but he hated it. He avoided trying on clothes at all costs. Back-to-school shopping was a chore he dreaded to the extreme. Every time we made a trip to our neighbor's store, Target, my son would longingly look in the windows of Justice and say, I ah, wish I could shop there. But we never went in. There was just something off-putting about those words on your window reading, Just for Girls. I was literally planning on going the day after HB2 became North Carolina law, March 23rd. This new law would ban transgender people from using public restrooms, showers, locker rooms, and changing rooms that aligned with their gender identity. Instead of going to justice that day, I ended up glued to my laptop trying to understand what to make of this new, horrific, anti-trans, excruciatingly discriminating, discriminatory law based on hyped up fears over a potential crime that has never actually happened. I wondered what this meant for my son's future, especially if he ends up transitioning to female. After getting a feel for what colors, textures, and patterns he liked, Stephanie showed us several possibilities from sequined mini skirts to slim jeggings. My son loved them all. We went to the changing room, and my son couldn't get those clothes on fast enough. Once that first outfit was on, he posed and admired himself in the mirror, spun around in circles to see the skirt poof out, and studied himself from all angles in every possible combination of outfits. It was pure joy. My son dropped his frequent doom and gloom look and suddenly sprang to life in those clothes. There was no denying he became a different, more confident, and happier child when wearing pretty things. So I want to ask you, Marty, um, despite what you felt as North Carolina's non-trans-friendly climate, your family had a wonderful experience at Justice. Do you think that that experience better reflects how actual, how actual people are reacting to trans people in the world as opposed to how politicians are reacting? <laughs> yes, I do. It was um, it was a very wonderful experience for us. Of course, at the time, um, my child was still going by he, him, a boy, and I really didn't know much about trans. I didn't know any transgender people. Um, but you know, and, and it's been three years since that letter. So um, my child is now um, a, a transgender, thirteen-year-old who expresses female and prefers they, them pronouns, mm -hmm. but um, also goes by she, her. So I kind of go back and forth between the two, mm -hmm. but yes, I mean, our state, the people here, I think 
I think the, the solid evidence was when we were able to vote Pat McCrory out of office mm-hmm. back in 2016. Uh, well, after HB2 came out, there was such kind of outrage Backlash. in the community because yeah. we are not a discriminatory state on the whole. Mm-hmm. Um, and people, I think everyone just did such a great job of coming together and surrounding the, the trans community at this time. Um, awareness was growing and growing. And um, we were able to unseat Pat McCrory, which then made him the first governor of North Carolina to not be reelected for a second term since the dissolution of the Whig Party in the 1800s. (laughs) I miss the Whigs. I miss the toupee. They were fun. Uh, Right. (laughs) Um, so, so I think, yeah, yeah. So it, sometimes I think that what we see in the media, it, it kind of like is designed to get us alarmed or to make us feel that either something is being taken away for, from us or that something is a threat or that, you know, trans people want to turn everybody the opposite gender, like both both sides politically right. sort of, you know, use transgender people as a, as a weapon and. It, you know, at the base of everything, it's just love. You know, you love for your child. We have this this child and this is what she's experiencing. And so how many people lived and died on this planet always feeling like they had to dress as something or someone they were not? And, then, and now finally people are able to express themselves. Well, that's called evolution. <laughs> it yeah. really is. I'm a fan. You know, I'm, I'm a, a fan. big fan right. of evolution myself, yeah. I, so I strive for how it did day. it feel with, within your family when the post went viral? I mean, you know, that's a question we get asked a lot. And that's the thing with viral stories is that you don't you don't expect it. You don't think it's going to go viral. I don't think anybody can ever prepare for that level of media whirlwind. Um, fortunately for us, it was a um, it was good attention, you know, not like a story that has come out more recently from our right up the street from here about a, um, some, some racist things that have been happening. Um, I wouldn't want that kind of, that kind of a viral story. This was a little more, of course, Mm -hmm. there were plenty of trolls that came out and wanted to, uh, accuse us of child abuse and whatnot, but it's the voices of love far outshine the voices of hate. Uh, we had, for a little while there, we had folks coming up to us in restaurants that just recognized uh, my child from the pictures. Um, we had one girl that came up in tears because like that mm-hmm. story gave her the courage to come mm-hmm. out as trans to her family. Mm-hmm. Um, and just the, the connection that I that we've all been able to form within the community around the entire world has been amazing. Marty, I have a question. After that post, did you feel like weird about posting other things like being like Tuesdays are my Mondays? Like you're like, okay, <laughs> now I have to be <laughs> political about everything. Yeah. I mean, did you feel like a sort of pressure? <laughs> yeah, That's funny. totally a fair question. Um, well, the thing is, I already was, um, God, all of this happened all at, like all at once. So I had just, I had been keeping a blog just for myself as I was going through this parenting journey. Um, I have three kids and my youngest is the, is the transgender one. Um, so I had already been blogging for like my five, you know, readers. Um, <laughs> and then a friend of mine encouraged me to audition for a um, staged reading um for writers called listen to your mother so i just kind of on a whim auditioned for that and uh, i used one of the blog posts that i had written about having at the time a gender non-conforming child um and i got in the show and then uh so and my child had already given me the okay even though they were pretty young they were still like oh mom not only do you do I want you to do this, but you have to do this. So they were (laughs) fine with it at the time and um, still are. So that was kind of like what opened the 
door. Um, but it was like, while we were in rehearsals for listen to your mother, and I'm reading on the topic of having this gender nonconforming child who may or may not transition, HB2 happened. And it, that was the moment I got, I got interested in mm -hmm. politics mm -hmm. because I just wanted to know what was happening and how this yeah. might affect my family if, if, if it ever did. Uh, and so the more I started reading, the deeper into it I got and the more I started realizing, wait a second, what's happening locally is not cool. This is not good. This is really bad and nobody's paying attention and they need to be. Um, so I got really, really involved politically before any of this viral stuff. Okay. Um, I have friends who, who were going down to the legislative building and listening in um, and reporting back to us, like those of us who couldn't be there in person via Facebook groups about here's what happened today with the GOP of North Carolina. Um, so when, when the, when I sent, posted this letter, this was the first thing I'd ever made public ever on Facebook. Um, having no idea it would even get shared. Really, I intended it just to make it around my community because for me, it was also sort of a, a, a local political statement like, okay, so we have HB2 going on, but look how wonderful our stores are because mm -hmm. I know it, it sounds ridiculous in hindsight. Like now we know there's no way they ever could have enforced a bathroom bill but I think bills that are written like that mainly are to confuse and scare everybody. Mm -hmm. Exactly. When, when something like that, there's a lot of, and because of the wording of the bill, because out. it yeah. included language like, you know, people could only use public restrooms, changing facilities, showers, locker rooms of their sex assigned at birth. You know, there, there was a lot, there was fair confusion. So, after yeah like the thing went went viral kind of overnight um the bulk of those shares happened that week oh. and subsequently that week i was also <laughs> performing in a show it was opening night week um and this this uh, it's crazy how connected all of this is the play was called southern baptist sissies <laughs> oh, 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 oh my gosh <laughs> by Del Shores. It's a wonderful play. Perfect. Uh, and I got to play uh, Annette. Oh, oh, my God. Annette Odette Barnett. Odette Annette Barnett. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I was, I was like the drunken bar fly. So I got to hang out with uh, another guy and we, we had a lot of fun. But it was only a two week rehearsal process and then one week of production. So the viral letter <laughs> or the, the letter went viral the week of this show and my phone was blowing up. I was backstage. I had to just shut it down. Um, mm -hmm. We, we were being contacted by reporters left and right. We, we talked to Buzzfeed up or the Washington post, uh, Huff post Brazil. I mean, wow. so many different places. It was mm -hmm. amazing. Uh, but there were so many that I had to turn down cause I just like, you, you can only do so much. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. But you, <laughs> you were you were the voice of who was going to be affected by this type of legislation. You sort know. of. And yeah, I, there were there were definitely more like I have some trans adult friends who were certainly on the front lines. I was not really I was not on the front lines. Um, like some of my friends with Equality NC um, who were actually at the time speaking with our ex-governor McCrory. Uh, and, and the funny thing is, is that I have a, a trans female friend who, when all of this was happening, went into the governor's mansion using the female restroom. Yeah. And, you know, she was assigned male <laughs> at birth. It, it was just a joke because it was like the governor can't even enforce this in his own house. And hopefully so. we properly <laughs> selfied this experience. <laughs> yes, yes, I hope so. You did. Okay. Um, I, have, I have a question for you. When you have a, a gender nonconforming child who's prepubescent, how do you as a parent decide whether or not 
hormone blockers should be used, something that's going to um, change metabolically um, the child. How do you, is that something that your mother's groups and physicians, are we organized about how early we should inter- intercede? Because, you know, we've got someone who, if he wants to be female, he probably should not go through puberty as a male. So these are, t- and you're asking a 10 year old to make these lifelong decisions at, mm-hmm. at that age. So how, how did you, how did you approach that part of things? Yeah, I'm glad you asked because there's a lot of misconceptions about that where people think kids are having surgery or going on life altering drugs. And that's just not the case, at least not no uh, of, of any credible, reputable doctor here in the United States or, or anywhere else. Um, and of course, as a parent, you're not, you know, you're not necessarily expecting this. I mean, we, the signs were always there. Um, but, you know, in my mind, I always just thought, having grown up in the theater, and I have an older son and an older daughter, so my third child, who was assigned male at birth, but always presented and acted and spoke and moved very feminine, uh, I just assumed, oh, okay, I'm going to probably have a gay kid. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, like, yeah, that was my my assumption. Right. Um, and, and that's still, that could be the case, but the I've learned since then that the two are not in any way related. So when, when parents, parents usually have some, some type of a hunch because you have, you have kids who, who are able to, as soon as they can talk, they're able to say that in whatever words that they have available, that they are not who we're telling them that they are. Um, Mm. And I think one way to kind of help cisgender people, uh, people who, who like me, because I'm not, I'm not trans. I don't know what it is to be trans. I can only speak from the perspective of a, a, a privileged person, you know, looking mm-hmm. in on my child's life. But to ask cis people, like, well, how old were you when you knew your gender? Mm-hmm. Like, most people kind of knew we don't typically have to sit down our kids and explain to them the time has come to tell you you're a boy now. I mean, it's just, it's not they com- get the it, message it's not completely- one way or the other. And it's the same way with trans kids. They just either through language or through behavior and actions as our child did showed us um, I'm not at all comfortable with boy stuff. Uh, so for all of our child's life, they did not, have male friends except maybe one Mm -hmm. um they all only wanted to hang out with females we had girls and boys stuff you know i say that in quotes Mm -hmm. girl stuff and boys stuff um, as far as toys and the rule was just anybody could play and our youngest never had any interest in any traditional male stuff And um, so that shopping trip to justice was the first time in their life that they'd ever been happy Mm. trying on clothes. Mm -hmm. And that was my light bulb moment when I realized this is, this Mm -hmm. is really bigger than what, what I thought. It's 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 quite a story. Identity. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the thing that's not completely analogous about cisgender people is that cisgender people are being told something that matches what they already know. So th- there's no moment where you realize you're a girl because everything's matching up. Like there's no exactly. conflict. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's why, I, you know, I do, I do think parents have to be m- maybe a little bit more careful about listening, especially when they're noticing behaviors, you know? Right. Yeah. I, I don't know. It, it's, well, a con- it, it's a conversation between you and your child as they develop. Is it all about preference? Is it all about preference? Is it, I preferred to dress up as a female or I prefer a male as opposed to I think to a we female. make assumptions when the There's, doctor hands you your child and says it's a girl. We make we yeah. make assumptions from that point mm-hmm. forward that are even just subconscious. Yeah. And when then, I when I was growing up, so, I had yeah. a I was really conflicted because I knew that I wasn't like all the other girls. Mm-hmm. So for a while I was like, oh, well maybe I'm supposed to be a boy. Mm-hmm. But then I also felt like a girl, like I liked certain yeah. girl things mm-hmm. and I like certain. Yeah. So it was like, it was really weird. Beca- and then it's like, as I got older, I was like, oh, I'm, I'm gay. So, you know, it kind of helped put the pieces together. But it was for a while, it was really conflicting because so I can't imagine what it's like to not feel even like yeah. the body that you're in. Because like I, fits. I mm-hmm. felt like it fit. But then I was like, well, 
I don't know why I'm feeling this way then. So it, that's that's how I led to the being gay part. But then, yeah. Just, oh, for me, it was just I wanted the boys kids. <laughs> uh, you, you didn't I, di- I couldn't explain to you why those were cooler. And that's what I wanted. But I, I didn't grow up in a time period where you could have the boys kids. No. Oh, yeah. Oh, it was verboten. Yeah. There's yeah. a rainbow of variety of what a person can love and be happy in having as a part of their life versus who they are as a person and what they want their lifestyle to be. Mm. So who you are as a person is different from what you may enjoy in life. So I Hmm. am a transgendered male, but I graduated makeup school, which is typically a more feminine thing to do, but I am still a male. Mm -hmm. And people can argue that, but there is a difference between (laughs) how you live your life and what you decide makes you happy. So if you're a girl who likes masculine shoes, it doesn't mean you're a boy. <laughs> it just right. means right. you like yeah. masculine shoes. It doesn't have to be yeah. that heavy. Like no, in other, yeah. words, yeah. In other yeah. words, what your preference is is so far beyond that. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Like who so, you are as a person and how you live your everyday life just as its complete basis has nothing to do with who you love or what you love. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. That's the difference. Yeah. I live my life That's usually by um if if it's like a male dominated thing and there's a female in there, I go to the female. Like if mm-hmm. I'm at a tra- if I'm at the gym and there's a female personal trainer, I'm like I pick you mm-hmm. because you're mm-hmm. obviously the best. So whenever I go to the <laughs> mat counter, whenever I go to the mat counter and there's a guy there, I'm like done. We're going here because you obviously are the one who had to buck all the whole system <laughs> yeah. to get to where you are. So, First yeah. the glass ceiling. Yeah. The so glass. you're gonna understand the smoky eye that I need. So yeah. like in- so Nate, could you tell us a little bit about your story and yeah, when you fully realized who who you are in the world? Yeah. Um. I, I do really quickly just want to mention something on um, Marty's journey mm-hmm. with the articles that I read that you sent us. Um, just from a, a trans perspective, there were so many overwhelmingly positive comments yeah, and sharings mm-hmm. of just people who were so full of love for her child and this experience. And I just also definitely want to expend, extend that to Marty just as a mother because good, flexible, supportive parents mm. save lives and it is not just the lives of their children because I go to a group therapy at um, the uh, Kaiser and we, I just every week there's a group of us that get together and talk it out and I am the most fortunate person that I know of in terms of a transgendered person that has a mostly supportive family, mm-hmm. not completely, mm-hmm. but mostly supportive family. For most of them, they got kicked out of their house or their parents won't talk to them until yeah. they act or dress the way that their parents want them oh to. It's God. it's mostly Jeez. very disheartening to mm-hmm. see or hear this. And so even just little things of just saying like i'll i'll happily invite any of them to holidays if i can like just yeah. knowing that there are people out there and unfortunately politics are louder than normal people right. and so you mostly hear the hate but mm-hmm. there are so many people that are supportive of us and it, i just love the reminders of even just stories like this, even if it was three years ago, it's still today. Just good, supportive parents. You are a blessing. Yeah. <laughs> just thank you so much. Oh, good, good, good. Can you tell us about, about the, the parent in your letter, when you read through your letter, you you, you give a shout out to some of the, the women that did some reconnaissance for you in terms of uh, going in to justice and, and, and scoping and making sure that, that it was going to pr- present a positive experience for Charlie. So talk about the, the parent support group and how you found each other online. Oh, well, so actually I, I founded that group because of my child. Um, it was during Charlie's fourth grade year Mm -hmm. uh, where they were. And um, I meant to get to this earlier and forgot, but another way parents know is because when the, with the onset of puberty, often that's when the gender dysphoria really gets ugly. Mm -hmm. Um, So fourth grade, was awful for Charlie and they didn't have any friends. 
it was just bad. So um, that was also when when Charlie was starting to realize or be being able to verbalize more of this feeling of being a a square peg trying to fit in a round hole. Um, and I sort of knew what was going on, but you know, I just decided that. I was going to start that, that, you know, if I couldn't be the only parent in North Carolina with this kind of child. Right. Mm -hmm. So I reached out again over social media, importance of technology, um, and just kind of did a poll to see if if I were to start a play group for young uh, gender nonconforming kids who would be interested And in the feedback I got was overwhelmingly supportive of people who would come wow. and then just by luck, I had someone else to reach out and say, um, or get me connected with the folks over at the LGBT Center of Raleigh. Um, and I met with them. And then we just, we were able to become, after like a three month trial period, we became a, a fully integrated program of the center. Um, so we're like a dual purpose group that serves as a play group for um, trans and gender non-conforming kids mm -hmm. ages 12 and under and a discussion group for parents. And then we have a separate secret Facebook group for parents all over the nation. Mm -hmm. um, but it was hmm. kind of by, this was kind of something I did just because I was ready to like open, open my living room up to complete strangers mm -hmm. just so that my child could know that they weren't alone. Right. And there are other kids out there like you, because at the time they were saying a lot of um, statements that sounded like just a bad downward spiral mental health wise. Um, For you. And so it, it was yeah. important to let them know there are other people like you. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've connected with a lot of friends that way. And our group was very new when um, when this viral letter thing happened. So it was actually some of the parents from the Facebook group who I had not even met in person yet. Um, one in particular who went, drove all the way down to, to the store to justice to speak with uh, the manager to, uh, and like pressed her with all these, these <laughs> questions that I at the time was probably too scared or nervous or whatever to, to ask. Right. So I'm really thankful that she did that because um, then she came back and was able to report to the entire Facebook group and say, Hey guys, guess what? They're really affirming here at this location and they, they're not going to enforce HB2. That's you know, awesome. like it doesn't apply. Right. They just want to make the sales. Right? <laughs> so, <laughs> so um, we were told to ask specifically for the manager whose name is Stephanie. Right. It is Stephanie, not Stephanie. Yeah. So like I learned Barbara that. Barbara Streisand. <laughs> um, that's yeah. the toughest it, thing I'm going to have to yeah, adjust Stephanie. to. Stephanie. That's, that's mm. the thing that I'm yeah. like, I can't wrap my brain around right now. <laughs> Two syllables. I'm like, Stephanie. <laughs> I'm, Stephanie. Uh, I, What's with Streisand? Streisand? <laughs> Streisand? Oh, Streisand? Oh, man. Who's so, Barbara Streisand? That should be illegal. <laughs> I don't want her in my I want. We're going to break for commercial and <laughs> When we come back, we're going to hear more of Nate's story. Hi, everybody. I'm RJ Metzger. And I'm Rachel Metzger. And we're the Skeptical Skeptics. Each week, we talk about all the crazy things in the world, ranging from the paranormal to Bigfoot to UFOs. And we look at it from the perspective of the believer, the skeptic, and everything in between. So come check us out on the MSC Podcast Network. Or go to SkepticalSkeptics.com and follow us at SkepSkepPod on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. I'm not sure about that show. Get it? Get it? Anyone get it? Anyone get it? Okay. Uh, so Nate, when, I mean, Trapped. for a lot of trans kids will come, you know, it's like the third time they've come out because they've come out as bi, they've come out as gay. And uh, come out. Like, so it's like, a, it's, it's a exhausting. journey to self-discovery. So, it never ends. <laughs> so tell us about, about your journey. Uh, so kind of, uh, sorry, uh, some aspect of yours as well where I was um okay I grew up in a catholic school so I didn't even know being transgendered existed until I got to high school and mm -hmm. my world kind of opened up um but, and and how did you discover that it existed so I was actually dating a, a girl in high school and um she would make frequent jokes about me being her boyfriend and 
it just kept coming and com- kept coming and something about that was like you know i i, I like that a little too much mm-hmm. um mm-hmm. and she's kind of the one who opened that up for me where i mentioned that that sounded really awesome and that like I, yeah i would love to be her boyfriend and she was like you know like there there are people like that and i'm like what do you mean so <laughs> um that was the the gateway into that and then for eight years uh i thought about it yeah <laughs> i went mm-hmm. back and forth i i was challenging within myself against the uh catholicism against the um society expectations against like no you know what like i still like some girly things so this is just me being crazy that you know it's too much of a change Mm -hmm. no one will get it and it's too much work for something that may not be serious but it never left my head and there were moments where throughout those years that i would try little things like deepening my voice at work that would feel really comfortable um having more of a boyish uh fashion sense that would make me more comfortable having boobs always made me very uncomfortable <laughs> mm-hmm. uh and then i went through what i call my peacock phase where i was so in denial about everything and just so uncomfortable with myself that i was like okay you know what uh obviously i'm a girl so i'm gonna be a girl and i wore pounds of makeup i wore very feminine clothing i wore very uh i think the most boyish thing about me was that my hair was very very short and i still never grew out my hair um and then i i got to a point where i was very exhausted with living Mm -hmm. (laughs) it was putting on a show Mm -hmm. every day and i hated looking at myself and so i hated what the world saw and so i never wanted to do anything so i would stay at home a lot i would trap myself and sort of livid limited my social excursions and i basically went to work and slept a lot and it was so bad that even my family noticed where you were depressed i I was depressed i was very depressed and yeah. yeah when and when your mom tries to tell you like hey you're you're sleeping a lot like you're 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 here and like i'm kind of worried about you like what's Mm -hmm. what's going on and even the possibility of waking up and wearing your peacock clothing yeah yeah, it didn't get you out of the exactly Exactly. yeah yeah it was like those were your share years yeah and and you (laughs) yeah and you slept through it uh yeah (laughs) and a small positive of that is that it did uh introduce me to the makeup world which i mentioned i did go to school um in Hollywood for that, which I really enjoyed. I really enjoy body painting. Um, still never That's ever got into though. the beauty makeup, but yeah, you it, were it just got like, me into like all, costuming. Like, I just don't and... want to be the canvas. Exactly. Yeah. No. Exactly. Because I I love the creative aspect of it. I love the design and and just it's just so cool to me. But it it was very exhausting on myself. Right. And mm-hmm. so I finally got to the point where. Um, I found a therapist that who was also a transgendered person and oh, that's um, great. It, oh it was it was wonderful because unfortunately my world was very small I had only ever met one other transgendered guy uh, and who was my sister's friend and I met him like maybe four times mm-hmm. <laughs> at this point and so I I didn't really feel comfortable sitting and talking to him of like mm-hmm. how did you know like why are you doing this yeah. what did you have to do do you feel better like i i wasn't that close to him you so. needed a stranger who was really no stranger yeah exactly yeah. Um, who you pay to sit and listen yeah, yeah. you know <laughs> that good stuff yeah. Um, yeah. so i i saw him for about two years and we it we really got to the point of like where he told me to my face like it is okay that you like some girly things and that you are a boy I was like, what? <laughs> like, <laughs> what do you mean? Mind yeah. So um, it was very affirming for me to meet someone who had already gone on the journey. He had a family. He was going to like conventions like as a representative of like, hey, your kid isn't crazy. Like, let them be happy and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> That's great. Yeah. So after that, I started testosterone uh, three years ago as of a couple of months ago um and 
then I, I've recently started going to the group at Kaiser and things are just kind of snowballing of, I have waited long enough. I've been thinking about it long enough. No matter how much effort it is, no matter how hard the change is going to be, it's obviously a change that needs to happen mm. because now versus where I was, I I had the thought of it it can't, wherever I go from now, it can't be worse than where I'm at. Right. Because <laughs> it sucks oh, <laughs> to hate boy. yourself. Yeah. It sucks. Yeah. So, oh, well, and I do feel better. So, yeah. yeah. And you're feeling better all the well, time? Yeah. All the time. All the time. Yeah. I had surgery, combination. chest surgery this year. Congratulations. Yeah. I can wear shirts that fit. Oh, like oh, I, that's awesome. <laughs> just the little things that don't really occur to you as a person of, of like, Finding a, a shirt that fits, just something that small mm -hmm. was yeah. so effective towards my lifestyle because I used to wear really baggy clothing just right. to literally hide myself. Yeah. And now I like I don't have to do that. <laughs> it's yeah. really fantastic. Well, I don't know whether or not this is an appropriate question. Okay. Because I know that it, if you if you're male, you you feel male and you are male. But I still am starving for intel. Mm. because you're a double agent what do <laughs> what do women not know about what it's like to be male and what do men not know about what it's like to be female marty oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> um okay uh bathroom time is cut in half but i oh, feel God. like that's the big answer <laughs> that's actually something okay yeah that and one other thing how long it takes to get ready that is something that my yeah. family has commented on um, every single time we go somewhere together they're like it, they're like we have to leave in 30 minutes like what are you doing i'm like I, dude like <laughs> i'm fine i'm ready and they're like okay we're leaving in five minutes i'm like cool and i'm like put on a pants and shirt and i'm like let's go <laughs> yeah <laughs> and it's great showers are shorter i i have not shaved my legs in two years and it's fantastic that's great uh yeah <laughs> like if me yeah. Easy, like yes the freedom Where do I sign which up? yeah which i know that actually like it's most women are also in that game of, I mean, of like it's yes weird, but <laughs> we're in the same boat right now i'm yeah. waiting for the boats to part but we're in like i take i take very sure i i'm I haven't shaved my legs. So it's like, I'm like, <laughs> it's just, it's so much work. And yeah. it's like, I, I was raised as a girl. And so there's a lot of things where as a guy, I can actually relate to women on a lot of things, which I think is a very, uh, a, a sort of a blessing to just have both point of views and kind of understand what a person can be going through because I might've been there at some point, you know, right. I, I think like that's one of the coolest things about, transitioning into the opposite gender of what was assigned at birth because mm -hmm. I I do get both worlds. Mm -hmm. I, I am experiencing both mm -hmm. worlds. I uh, <laughs> The difference of Lyft drivers, because uh, I take Lyft to work uh, when I represented more as a female, very talkative, mm -hmm. very conversational. Oh my gosh, now I have facial hair, the flat chest, and it's utter silence. <laughs> wow. Tell you like, interesting. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> utter silence. Wow. Which no I prefer, narrative. honestly. So I'm okay with it. That. But it was quite a change. I was like, whoa. Now, now did you have brothers and sisters? I have Do an you? older sister. You have an older sister. Yes. So you were around her femininity. Yeah, so I was actually and, and raised by women. That, yes. Uh, uh, my oh, raised father by was just out a single of, woman. Yeah, okay. by, I was, uh, my father was out of my life early on. And so my mother and my older sister raised me. And then basically all of my family are women as well um, because my uncles, uh, my, my grandfather's passed away early on and most of my family just has girls. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I, mean, I am it, it, around the feminine energy yeah. a lot. Okay. And so I never actually had a masculine impact, which I think is part of the reason why it was harder for me to come to terms for it okay. because I, I didn't have the examples. And so mm -hmm. I literally had to find within myself of um, like sort of looking and observing the strangers around me, uh, yeah. the and men. You, and and your, your, your role models were men. I, for the most part, yeah, no, I don't think. Cause, I don't know. I cause a lot did, of yeah. um, people that I looked up to the the thing. I don't know it. People that I looked up to, it was a lot of the confusion of uh, 
do I look up to you because I'm like necessarily want to be you or like, or no, maybe that's a different question. Um, sorry. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't think I had any role models necessarily like female or mm. male. A lot of mm. what I was um, like invested my time into when I was younger were novels and um, cartoon shows. And, and I still enjoy those now. I have um, a really important question. But, um, What's it like to grow a beard? It's weird. It's <laughs> it's like the okay. So I I'm I'm still very patchy because it's still very early I on. I like it, but I think it's, it looks great. I, thank you. Oh my god, I appreciate that. Yeah, it looks <laughs> great. Oh, his voice got, his voice got lower. His voice got lower. Thank you very much. <laughs> oh, oh, yes. 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 Bring out the man. Oh, really <laughs> I like my whiskers too. Yes. <laughs> I got I got to teach you how to talk like this. It's it's, <laughs> it's it. ticklish. It's, it's like when it, when you turn and and it like. Like goes up against I yourself. Know. The same too when I first started growing out my leg hair. Like I kept thinking something was on me. And it just <laughs> like kept dragging against me. I was like, what is happening? And now finally we've gotten to the point where it's settled. <laughs> but uh I'm I shave my face on and off so that it'll hopefully at some point it grow in grow thicker. More. Yeah. Because yeah. I definitely have the um pubescent patches going on right now. Mm -hmm. So there's a certain point where it just gets weird and it has to go. But mm -hmm. I'm enjoying um, it. <laughs> I just was wondering, is this Ooh, is this not on? on Dina? What happened? It was on before. Oh there yeah, it is. There we go. Is that working? Okay. Yeah. Um, so, Nate, it sounds like you have like a real world support group that you attend regularly. Yes. I was wondering, is there was there like an online community that you kind of turn to for like support or just like information? Yeah. Um, At any point, there are there are communities and there's a boatload of information online. Um, in terms of my journey, I was really afraid to do research um, because a, kind of what we mentioned earlier, negativity is loud. And so a lot of the times that I would look up certain subjects or like political things, it was just mostly scary. It was scary to think that I could possibly be uh, a part of, something that is not really having a good time right now. <laughs> mm -hmm. So um, I that's specifically why I wanted to find a therapist who could help me, someone who had themselves lived through it because it, they're a living, real person. I, I can look them in the eyes and, and they can give me yeah. the answers of their perspective instead of who knows who is writing these things are trying yeah, to right. what's the energy behind it and the what's the, yeah, mo what's the motive or like what's real or what's not i want um, to go back to marty uh, really quick and um ask you about your blog because in, in your blog you talk about a continuous assault on the trans community and i'm wondering how we can protect uh, gender non-conforming children from adults who wish to use them as a political weapon that's a great question and i think that education 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 um knowing the facts it's what is probably the most important thing is that parents follow the child's lead and that is that does not mean the same thing as letting your child run the show um but it's that you're on some level in tune with what they're showing you with their behavior because all behavior is communication. Um, a lot of trans kids have have issues, um, bathroom issues, and things like that. Um, so there's a lot, a lot of things, a lot of signs. But the resources that are available online, there's just so much now. When I started blogging about my own um, experience, there, I, I couldn't. It was hard to find anything relevant like i could you know at the time i think i don't even think caitlin jenner was out at the time so mm -hmm. um there just wasn't a lot of material to pull from but um i think one of the one of the best things that that allies can do or just anyone is to you know just kind of like fact check your <laughs> your news right like there's some really bad sources of information out there. Like um, there's this one organization that that 
parades itself as um, I think they, they want people to mistakenly believe that they are the American Pediatric Association because their name is similar, but it's not exactly them. And they have, um, they're a, a political group who is, I think maybe only has like 500 members as opposed to the like 68,000 members in, in the in, um, APA. But anyway, just, just fact checking your, your info, um, not making assumptions about anyone's gender. Um, and I think just attacking all of the, the ignorance with, with facts, because I think that the main issue is that um, it, uh, people that tend to have a problem with this is because of fear, fear of the unknown, right. mm -hmm. fear of, uh, of something they might think is contagious, or mm -hmm. they think uh, that people like those in the trans community are, um, a lot of times they think it's like tw all twisted up with sexuality and like it's some type of a perverted kink. Yeah. Yeah. And They're it's not fair. that, it, has, it really has nothing to do. Your gender identity is totally separate from your sexual orientation. Um, well, I, but have, I, think I have a question just, about, about that yeah. because... I think that one of the things that can happen and that may lead to a lot of um, violence against trans people is that let's say you're, you're a dude and maybe you don't have really strong self-esteem, but you find yourself attracted to a woman and then you found, you find out that she's trans and now you're worried that does that make you gay because you've been attracted to this person who was born as a male. And mm. I think that's the rage at yourself is what leads to a lot of these hate crimes. Is is there anything behind that as a theory? <sighs> oh, I, I think that's valid yeah. because of them mistaking sexual preference for gender. Uh, a transsexual, a transgendered woman does, if you're a guy who loves a transgendered woman, that doesn't make you gay. That makes you a straight male. Right. It's uh -huh. just the parts that are a little bit different from a mm -hmm. cis woman, but that's also no one's business. So no one needs to know that. Right. <laughs> and, and even if you were attracted to a guy, so what anyway? And because it was just the person. It's just, it's yeah, the yeah person. it's a lot of self-imposed I, I think I, it just, I don't mean me flipping about it, but I think you have to go to the speech at the end of Tootsie that Dustin Hoffman gave. I do Dorothy. often. I do. And that, was, that was a brilliant piece. Uh, that was a brilliant diatribe about... Uh, it doesn't matter whether I'm a man or a woman. Mm -hmm. If you know, love is love, and accomplishment is accomplishment. And yeah. I, I think, and as far as HB two is concerned, Marty, I think you're so right that it it just was a, a, a backlash of fear. And as with anything that's happened in this country over the last hundred, hundred and fifty years, from the suffragettes to Black Power to gay rights, uh, the, when it first happens, there is an overreaction especially from the people that we call the right, but the, it may well, be, it, it may be, be just right. a general overreaction. It's yeah. just people who are going to use some sort of fear as combustion, yes. like either from the left, it's like they're coming for my rights and from the right, mm -hmm. it's like they're coming for my kids and they're coming they're gonna, into her bathroom dressed as a, gay, dressed as a yes. woman. And they're uh, so well, I, and I, and, I grew up in Orange County, California, and in, you know, I'm gay. And uh, I don't know if I mentioned that enough. And you, um, you survived. Uh, are, no, are you, but and you're, you're a gay woman. One more growing, time, please. Yeah. Growing up in Orange County. I am County. a lesbian. <laughs> okay. and, uh, oh, got it, got it, got, got it. it. I'm lesbianic. Yeah. And so. Les lesbian um, said about that, the better. <laughs> so well, I'm, a gay, I'm, a, I'm a gay person who's gay. And, uh, and so. I, but when growing up, like my mom kind of knew and she would sort of like say things like, you know, I think if you lost weight, you would find men more attractive, uh, which is, you know, what? Oh yeah. my God. I don't even, uh, yeah. Ah, oh I mean, my you know, God. It, says it hurts my it brain so hard. You would find men more attractive. I mean, why, do, why are all gay men fit? It's because they like men. Um, yes. So. They want to look good. No. So, uh, but, but she would also say like, it's a mental problem. It's a mental thing. And growing up, it was like, it was one of those things where it's like it transitioned from being like, okay, gay is fine, but transgender is more like mental. And it's like people who think they're gay, but whatever. Mm -hmm. So I was indoctrinated into that. So when I, when I was in my early twenties, 
that was my opinion. Like, I was like, yeah, I'm gay, but I'm also, I also believe that like people who are transgendered have a mental disease and they, they don't realize that they're gay, which is bonkers, which is mm-hmm. totally <laughs> wrong. And it wasn't until like I joined an LGBT group at my college and I had somebody say, you are a dumb person who's dumb and, and they were like <laughs> in so many so that's why like, you're a gay person who's gay but and that's how you the, identify and that's yeah, fine yeah, yeah yeah I'm a dumb gay person and so um, <laughs> no but she, they, she said it in the nicest way possible um, no offense but, but yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, bless like, your how heart how could you be this freaking stupid um, and so no but she like and I, I agree. I think it comes from this idea of like not understanding. So your mind immediately goes to like, well, I am right. And because I don't get it, they are wrong. Mm-hmm. And so yeah. they must be the problem because they yes. are not, it is not clear to me why they are doing what they're doing. And so it took me so long. It took an embarrassing amount of time before I was like, no, it's, it's obviously, it's a completely different separate issue. It's a completely separate thing. But I, when I finally came to that, I realized how it's depressing how little the gay community supports transgender. Interesting. Yes. Interesting. And so really? I feel like it's like, like quite yeah. a bit of it is. Um, it's it's more like it, I I I hmm. think it's getting better. Like if but, you watch Pose, when the drag queens go to the just regular gay bar yeah they're just kicked out on their ass oh yeah they're like you're making us look weird yeah and (laughs) and it just so that was like the 80s so they completely i mean the woman the the person who threw the first thing who started stonewall riots was a transgender woman and when they did the movie Mm. they completely changed it to where it was like an attractive Mm. gay man who was like liberty you know he's like he was like a you know (laughs) <laughs> he yeah. was like a, he all of a sudden well, became like uh, Mel Gibson. He was like, they might take off. <laughs> I haven't announced yeah. this on the air yet, yeah. but my daughter, who's a queer woman, uh, won the RuPaul Drag Race Yay. a couple of weeks ago. Oh, and nice. now is going into the semifinals or something. I don't know. That's she was exciting. a cotton candy queen. <laughs> it was the most outrageous oh, costume. Hilarious. But here, here I Google grew it? up. I grew up with this little girl. Uh, well, she grew up with me. She grew up with this old guy. <laughs> but I, uh, and she was a tomboy. She just was great at sports, and she was also a great singer and a great dancer, and, and, and she liked to dress up. And here she is now uh, winning the RuPaul Drag ra- uh, Queen race and, and in a cotton candy outfit. Yeah. The, I, you might be able to pull up that picture. I don't know whether you can or not. And I wanted to say this. She also made a video called One Bad Night. And it's about a transsexual woman uh, who gets molested and uh, beat up. That's... And is rescued by, I could tell you the story, or you could... I guys, don't, can you find spoiler it? Spoiler alert. Mm. Spoiler alert? Yeah, I don't uh, no, want to No, we can't play it, it you guys. We, we don't have it. the rights well, to Haley's music. Even oh, though we have her fa- we have the rights to her poo. father. Oh, <laughs> you can <laughs> sing it for Not her. to her music. But anyway, there's a, okay, this guy uh, was a Valley Parker and he got in this really cool car that Haley got from Fiat. Wait, but, start from the beginning. That's it. Okay. <laughs> there's this guy who's a Valley Parking guy and gets in this really cool car and you see him go, oh, this for a ride so he takes it for a ride and while he's taking it for a ride there's a trans woman walking down the street and a bunch of guys come out out and pull her into an alley and start beating on her and the valley parker guy who stole the car discovers her and rescues her and takes her to a diner and and they become friends and they have milk together and but it's a great little story and and the reaction to that was was tremendous from the trans yeah. community and and my wife being my my daughter being a queer woman um does and that's how she likes to be identified uh she she had empathy for her trans friends this guy uh, the per, the the woman is a goinka or, or goishka from san francisco very famous actually documented uh, his transition to her online 
And oh, it's wow. the only documentation. I love it when people do that. I wish it. I had the mind to do that when I started, but yeah. I was so like, don't look at me. Like, well, we have But little... seeing comparisons yeah. is so cool. Yeah, and Marty has done that for um, Charlie, and we, we're going to have that in a moment. But first, I want to oh, get good. to transgender individuals in the news. Victoria's Secret has hired yes. their first transgender model, Yes. which begs this question from me. Is it a victory that trans women are now subjected to the same se- sexual objectification pressures as cis women? Are we fans of this or are we mm. not? How do you feel? Okay. I'm okay. Here is why I am excited for this. Okay. <laughs> Being a woman is experiencing experiencing mm-hmm. sexism, hate, mm-hmm. abuse, all of that. That is being a woman. That is unfortunately a woman experience. That is a constant fight and battle to s- stop <laughs> those right. trends. If she is going up against a woman's battle, then that means that she's being identified and properly respected as a woman. Mm -hmm. And I think that is a win because no matter where you come from as a woman, you have something to fight for and to fight against. So if she can join in on the fight as, as a transgendered woman alongside cisgendered woman, I think that's amazing. She, I think she should fight for wearing that. Wearing underwear in public helps her fight? That it's Victoria's Secret is like kind of a different thing for me. Okay. But that it's an acknowledgement that she is a beautiful woman okay. who can be sexy and, be sexy and identified as this beautiful feminine woman. I think that's amazing. There's a whole other slew of problems with Victoria's Secret in general in which they only focus on one body type on certain type of girls and stuff. But that's like that's like another subject. (laughs) You're you're going to get that whole vibe around Christmas when you walk into Victoria's Secret now as a man. Oh, it's God. Just, yeah, sure. Can, <laughs> can I show you anything? Yes. And they're very uncomfortable. I've, yeah. they're very uncomfortable. I've so, never uh, felt comfortable in there. I, I, <laughs> I, 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 I was like, oh, I'll I, wait in the, um, out, out, the, out, I love the outside. It. I'm a regular Victoria's Secret. <laughs> yeah. I'm just like, give me the usual. Well, I, <laughs> wrap it up. I pretend like I'm buying for myself. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I say, do you have something like this in my size? Yeah. I'm a, I'm a triple double D. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We're going to. We're going to cut to Facebook feed time right now because I love this one. It comes to us from our friend Lydia Cornell, and she writes, Lydia. Just visited the Too Close for Comfort house on Buena Vista Street in San Francisco. Had the lucky coincidence, God shot, of meeting the owner as she was walking <laughs> up the drive. She invited, she invited me in, and we had a delightful visit for over an hour. She has lived there since 1985. The house is no longer red. She is a published author, psychologist, and world traveler. Lois Goodwill, more picks to follow. So that's where I guess they shot the exterior for Too Close for Comfort. And yeah. then, of course, the yeah. sets were in Hollywood and everything. But Lydia managed to find the owner at home and get and get to, and like, say, you know, on TV, I lived here with, uh, you know, that's, that's Bob pretty cool. No, with, no, with uh, Ted with who? Uh, Knight. Oh, Ted, Ted Knight. Yeah. Oh, Ted Knight. Right. Or Ted Knight, right? Wait, yeah. I always get confused well, between his real name and his name on Mary Tyler Moore. Because they were both, he was Ted in both. Yeah. All right. It was Ted Knight, so, though. That's yeah. his real name. In Too Close for Comfort, it was he was the exasperated father of two sexy girls. Okay. Uh, and Lydia was one of them. Those weren't my TV years. Now we go to what's Twitter trending. And under the hashtag trans is beautiful, we have DJ, uh, who's at Becoming Dakota, and he's... He tweets, I promise I'm so much happier now. And do you like these when you see the the photos I love side them. by side? I love them. Um, the girl I mentioned that I did in high school, she is now my best friend. We're not together anymore, but mm-hmm. she is still one of the most supportive people in my life. And when I started my testosterone and it was kind of difficult, like the transition is just sort of difficult in general because your whole body is changing mm-hmm. and it, it's weird. But she would send me posts like that Aww. on like Instagram and Facebook and yeah. be like, just, you know, just be patient. You got this. It's going to happen. Look, this is going to be you. It's going to, and I just, wow, she oh, really loves you. God. Oh, she really yeah. Loves I, you. I love her too. She's great. one of the best people in my Somebody life. Somebody in high school like that. That's, yeah, I know. <laughs> that's early to have such a meaningful relationship. Yeah, I'm, I'm that's very, great. very fortunate about the people yeah. in my life. They're, that's well, great. you attract good people. Okay. Your, parent, your parents, you talked about them before. Yeah, my my mom. It was um, 
she needed time, but overall she was very accepting. Yeah. She just had to get along with the um, the pronouns and kind of wrap her head around kind of in, in the same realm as Marty where she didn't know uh, any other transgender people, um, barely any other gay people. So it was just kind of a new concept for her. And so she was kind of confused at first and then uh, she learned more about it. And um, now we like talk about it more and now she's just... So very, very supportive. Onward, yeah. onward. I have a son. Exactly. Yeah. Faith Neff Absolutely. tweets, I know I post a bunch of comparison shots, but I'm just so damn proud of it. I, I look at this and I'm still just like, holy shit, I actually transitioned. I really <laughs> did it. Honestly, I hope that feeling never goes away. Yeah. <laughs> so we have Vegan Beef Boy who tweets, ever just get your senior pictures redone 10 years later as your true self? Oh, that's an awesome idea. Isn't that great? <laughs> that <laughs> is. <laughs> And this is, Jamie, you're going to help me with this because it involves French. Okay. All right. Uh, this comes from Jean, happy trans boy, and he posted an official document he received, and he typed the following, life can now begins, which is so <laughs> cute. And then the document reads, <laughs> Je fais suivre votre demande de changement de pronom et des pieces jantes et l'appui de celle-ci par conséquent. Vous êtes disarmement autorisé et vous apprenez non more. Okay, so I... translated is... I typed, flows a lot better. I typed that into Google Translate, yeah. and it says, more or less, I am following your request for change of name and attachments in support of it by design. You are now authorized to name you Jean Marin. Uh, so I want to ask you guys, how difficult is it to officially change your gender on the government documents? Is it easier if this all takes place, for example, like with Charlie before she gets, mm -hmm. a, driver, er, she gets a driver's license? And what was your, what was your experience, uh, Nate? I haven't uh, legally changed anything yet. Um, I gotta get around to that. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Darn, Honestly, I, it's, I was gonna do that yesterday. It's so oh, it, it's, it's overwhelming, right? It's you need a, a lawyer. lot. It's it's technically easy because it's technically just paperwork that you have to fill out and then turn in and then a court date and just all that. It's just so. Uh, time consuming and a lot of traveling and it's mm. yeah it's just one of those things where okay once I start yeah. it's it's gonna it take seems... forever and it's like finding the right paperwork is also a little difficult you know but... what it seems like there should be and maybe There's... maybe we can kind of generate exactly. this this energy especially Marty since she's sort of the champion of yeah. all you know <laughs> of movement but it seems like there should be some pro bono lawyers who have the template and the boilerplates and you mm -hmm. write to them and you say i need to change my gender and boom they do it well, because be it's really if you know what you're doing it's not hard if you don't know what you're doing it it's is. that's exactly oh, yeah. it yeah there's a we a, actually have that here okay oh, do they? wow oh, great. Nice. Our, hey. is, it, is it a company is sister, it a, yeah um occasionally offers a gender name a gender name change clinic with um, maybe folks from trans equality or um, lawyers who can be there to to legally advise how to move forward. So that is something that that um, our center offers from time to time. And, and do the lawyers awesome. advertise on TV? Like, need to change your gender? <laughs> yeah. Need to change your name? Come to Switcheroo. Get it done now. <laughs> All right, we're going to do, Marty has uh, uh, posted on Twitter in, in the hashtag trans, Trans is beautiful. Uh, transformation over the past three years of Charlie. And if you could guys could click on this and keep the sound off since we don't have the rights to the music, then Marty, you can talk your your way through this and and uh, sort of narrate, if you will, once we pull up the tweet. Okay. Okay. I got to figure out which one this is. Oh yeah. Okay. Um. Yep. Yeah, so that's the ultrasound. Um. That's, that's beyond so the ultrasound. Short it was it was you know, well, there's all a little, these years beyond the there's a lag so she's saying <laughs> oh, you know all oh, these years go. we thought and here you can see most of these photos where we that we have of charlie dressed and looking <laughs> like a boy they're not happy mm -hmm. yeah he's um she's not smiling and you'll notice that once we kind of switched over to um you know, I mean, you see the obvious change. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, in the smile, in the posture. Owning, owning uh, herself. 
Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, it was like watching my child come to life. Wow. Wow. Um, yeah. And they transitioned socially, socially transitioned, meaning no, no medication or anything. We're, they are on puberty blockers now, but again, that, that's a, that was a huge process. Um, this is Charlie right now, mm -hmm. how, how they look now. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, the blockers are, it takes a while. Like you have to, you have to show documentation that you've been working with a like a specific gender based therapist or someone who specializes in, in trans, uh, trans issues in general. Mm -hmm. Um, it, there's just a lot, you don't just walk in and ask for blockers and they hand it out like Prozac. It's mm. just not Good. like that. Good. It's, it's very difficult, a difficult process. Um, just as Nate was talking about how hard it is to do all the, the legal changing. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that even after you, after the trans people go through all of this, they do have, it's wonderful to see this like gender euphoria mm -hmm. that they experience. I have a, a trans woman friend who describes it as being in the pink fog. Um, <laughs> and it just like, it's just wonderful to talk to trans adults um, and congratulations to you, Nate. You look Thank great. You. you, you radiate positivity and yeah. happiness and that's Thank awesome. You. Um, and so it, it's helpful for parents like me who don't really know what's in store because like kids can only stay on blockers for a certain amount of time. Mm -hmm. And really it's just to buy them time. Yeah. Um, while they're working through with their gender therapist, like, is, do I really want to like go forward to the next step? Mm -hmm. So, um, it's helpful to, to hear from trans adults who are successful and doing well and happy and exude all of this joy. Cause it, it just reaffirms what, you know, the work we're doing on this end. Mm -hmm. oh, now, that's now uh, for those of, uh, of our uh, fans out there in TV land, uh, can you explain uh, your reference to they? You're using that, that, that pronoun to, to reference your child. And when they do transition medically, will that then change? Or are you referring to, are you using the word, the pronoun they because that's plural and it means he and she? I don't know. I think that pe I think people tend to read into that a little bit too much. Um, mm -hmm. It's they them are Charlie's um, uh, I hate preferences. To use the word preferred uh, because that really? kind of has some negative connotations. But really? that's those are the pronouns Charlie prefers because they are sort of in this in between stage. They are clearly not happy. Yes, and never have been happy with yeah. with ha being having been born a boy. Um, but they're, they, I guess, you know, they're not, they're not 110% girl either. Like there's, mm -hmm. as Nate was okay. saying earlier, you, know, you can, you can, you can like, you know, typical gendered activities that don't match what you are. Yeah. Um, so that's why you're anyway, using that. So th that's... those are the pronouns Charlie prefers, but because and... people have so much difficulty even though we use singular they all the time, all of us, we all do it without even thinking about it. Um, some, oh, somebody left their coat here. Um, you know, we, we, we do this. We don't think about it. We're not used to doing it regarding one person. Right. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, so because people have such trouble with it and because Charlie's been on blockers and has kind of this passing privilege as a female and is assumed cisgender female everywhere we go mm -hmm. um they are also happy to go by she her mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. it's and, and, and I, i've seen this with a few other trans folks um jacob Tobiah, uh hunter schaefer who are both from north carolina my state um go by they and she mm -hmm. so i see you know it's not just us what <laughs> you about had, you, you had something yeah. there nate yeah. oh um so i know that a lot of uh a a gender people, which are people that um, don't have a gender, they don't relate to either gender, uh, mm -hmm. they use the pronouns, they use the pronouns they and them. Mm -hmm. uh, because it's yeah. it's literally both used as kind of an in-between 
um, but then also yep. as nothing. Is that synonymous so, with asexual? No. 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 Just like no. non gender You're attracted conforming. to is different yeah. from who you feel like you are. Yes. Same, okay. Like yeah. idea kind of because like asexual is like you're not uh sexual Interested. at all. Mm-hmm. Um and then agender is just you're not a gender. You haven't at all. Ch- chosen. <laughs> exactly. Well, um whether or not or they haven't. will decide if they want to be a gender will be up to them, but oh, sometimes people don't even get there. Yeah. yeah. Like if and you're... you can anyone can use the they them pronoun like there's mm-hmm. uh, cis, you know, people that identify as cis and um heterosexual sometimes that just may want to use they them. It's just uh, a it's very similar basic generic way to reference someone who either you may not be sure where they stand and you don't want to disrespect them or they're mm-hmm. not sure where they stand and maybe it's less confusing and for them it's that very, way. It's a very plural name. If somebody said that to me, i turn around to see who was with me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what? what are you talking about? Yeah, it's, uh, it's more of like a... a now that you know this, Jamie, what would Tootsie's preferred gender pronoun be? <laughs> <laughs> Goddess. <laughs> we're going to yeah. have to wrap things up. We're out Even of time. I want to thank our guests, Marty Soroy and Nate yes. Halbauer, and to our panel, Jamie Alcroft and Lori Roggenkamp. Our producer is Dina Friedman. Our tech team is, oh, it looks like we have Francesco DeManda and yeah. Thomas Hubble. Thomas. Our sound designer is John Maddox. Our webmaster is Bill Filippiak. I am Louise Palenka. We will see you next week. Be safe, be well, be kind. Bye bye.